Hi, welcome to Make a Repokery. This week, I made a new headboard for my bed. It's right behind me there. And uh, I think it came out pretty good. It's a pretty straightforward project. Just a big panel glue up with a faux live edge for effect. But to be honest with you, I've had more problems on this project than on almost anything else I've ever done. Things way more complicated than this, like much more complex, larger, with complicated joinery, nowhere near as frustrating and difficult as this turned out to be. On the plus side, I don't think I've ever learned more on a single project than I did on this one. On the minus side, I don't think I've ever learned more on a single project than I did on this one. Mostly because of stupid errors on my part. And that's why I'm calling this one Headboard. Mistakes were made. Because many mistakes were made. Uh, by me. Uh, let's get started. So the first thing I did was choose my boards and spread some with a little water just to make sure I liked how the grain and the color looked. I should have used alcohol or mineral spirits for this. Using water was a mistake. One of the boards actually warped slightly from it. Hard maple is a great wood, but it's also stubborn and it often has a lot of tension in it. And if you give it any excuse, it wants to move. So that was a mistake and it meant more milling later. Next, I cut them to length. And then I jointed them. I think the joiner is pretty cool and I've always wanted to demonstrate how it works. So what I did was I put chalk all over the bottom of this board and then I ran it over the joiner. And the way it works is it shaves off the highest points on the board little by little, leaving behind a flat surface. And then you can see right there where it's taken the chalk off. And even less chalk. Also less chalk. Way less chalk. No more chalk. So that side is flat and can be used as a reference surface. Next thing you do is put that side down and then pass the board through the planer. Now the planer doesn't make things flat. It just makes the top face parallel with the bottom face. Then I went back to the jointer and made one edge flat and square. Now I put that reference edge against the fence on the table saw and I buzzed off the other edge. As I was going, I would stack them up and make sure I was getting nice tight joints. Next, I spent a really long time lining the boards up and getting the look of the grain that I wanted. I was not going for the look of a seamless panel, as if I just cut a giant tree in half. I knew I couldn't achieve that. So I just tried to make the grain move in a way that I thought looked nice. Once I had it all lined up the way I wanted it, I went through and marked carefully how the boards were lined up, and I also marked where I wanted to put the dominoes. And then I got the domino, and I put in the dominoes. And then I could glue it up. I used too much glue, I'm not gonna lie. This is way more than I needed. Because this panel was so large, I couldn't do it all at once in one giant glue up. Instead, I did it in sections, gluing two or three boards together into a smaller panel and then finally gluing that into this giant panel. As you can see, it's really huge. By far the biggest glue up I've ever done. Now here's a very satisfying little part. If you wait just the right amount of time, then you can take a scraper and just easily peel off the squeeze out. You have to let it kind of get like cheesy. It's a, it should literally feel like cheese. I love doing this. My God, it's so satisfying. This is after the glue is dry. It came out pretty good. Then it was time to make the faux live edge. Now I had to do this twice. The first time I just didn't like how it came out. It just didn't look right. One thing I have noticed watching tutorials online is that people will often take the straightest grained piece of wood they can find and then just cut a wavy edge onto it which always just looks kind of weird to me. So what I tried to do was follow the grain with my cut, but that ended up being too bumpy and also looked a bit weird. You'll see. Tracing this took a really long time. Then I took a jigsaw and I set the blade on an angle and I made my cut. I kind of cut it in several different directions because I didn't really know what I was doing. 
I'm gonna use a spoke shave. A fro would have been good for this too. Then I have a sander which has a grinding mode. So I put it on that with some 40 grit paper. This was a laborious process and the result was not very good. You can see it there. It's too bumpy, too rounded over. It just doesn't look like a tree would actually grow that way. So then I did what I should have done from the very beginning. I went and found an actual slab that someone had on one of the shelves in the shop, and I looked at it. This slope part here is called the wane, which is a word I just learned, and you can see that it all slopes in one direction since it's the side of a tree. There's sap wood along the edge, you can see there, which I'm not going to try to approximate. I'm not trying to make a perfectly realistic looking fake live edge. I'm more like suggesting a live edge, giving it that feel, but not trying to fool anybody. Once I saw this grain pattern, I realized I could just kind of let the grain go off the side. It's interesting to study a piece of wood like this. I've never really spent much time doing it. So now I recut the thing, this time keeping everything to the same angle and making the waves much more subtle. Then I hit that with the grinder for a good long while. And then I sanded it a whole bunch and a whole bunch more. And then I was much happier with the result. I think it looks pretty good. So then I cut it to the final length, which I had not done yet because I wanted to have some options. When you work on hard maple, especially big thick chunks like this, it's difficult not to burn it because the saw just can't go very fast through it. So you get these ugly scorch marks. You can sand them out, but it's kind of a pain. So what I do is I cut so it's slightly over length by less than the thickness of the saw blade. So like a 16th of an inch or something. Then I move the track over and make a much faster cut. You can see it, I'm moving a lot quicker here. This is not sped up and that just gets the burn off. And then I sanded it and I did not do a good job. <laughs> I thought I had, but I hadn't. And this is where I learned a hell of a lot, right here. Here we go. So this is the white wax made by Osmo. It's good stuff, works well. I used it on another project to finish some bleached wood and it came out fantastic. You get good results if you apply it with a scraper. So you scrape it on and then you wipe any spots the scraper couldn't get and you leave it sit for about 20 minutes and then you buff it with one of these Scotch-Brite pads and the result will be a really nice finish, provided of course that you have done a good job preparing the wood, which I had not. I did two coats. This is after the second coat. Okay, so now let's zoom in on this photo. The issues were much more noticeable in person than they are in this picture. So inside of this square, I've changed the color correction to highlight the problem. Okay, see that white line there? That's from the planer. In person, you could really see these. There were a lot of them. And over here, you see all those little white speckles and dots? That's tear out from the planer. And then when you look at the entire panel with this incredibly unflattering color correction on it, there are all kinds of tool marks on here. There are places where I press the sander too hard. It just wasn't well done. So I gotta be honest with you, I didn't film the part where I stripped off all the wax for the first time and refinished it. I was too annoyed. I was just gonna pass it off like I knew what I was doing. Sorry. So I removed all the wax and then I took a pencil and I covered the whole surface lightly with pencil markings. And then I took some 80 grit sandpaper and I went over it until all the pencil was gone. And then I took the pencil again and I covered the surface lightly in markings and I went over it with 120. And I repeated that process all the way up to 220. Each time you do it, you need to make the markings a little lighter because removing heavy markings with 220 sucks. And then I put the wax on again, two coats. Here it is with the second coat of white wax freshly applied. So much better. You can see a slight texture, but that's from the pad and will go away once it's cured because you buff it for a final time once it's fully cured. And then I made my fatal mistake, a classic and stupid order of operations mistake. And I flipped the panel over just to put like a clear coat on the back just for a little extra protection. The back will always be against the wall, so it doesn't really matter, but I figured why not? I found that there were holes back there, so I decided to fill them. I should not have done that. I honestly can't believe I finished, a, like completely finished twice, by the way, the front side of this thing, flipped it over and then decided to put epoxy into it. I, I don't know. That hole right there that I'm putting the tape on, I didn't know it but that went through to the other side. It only went to a little tiny pinhole, which is why I didn't know it, but it did go through, enough for the epoxy to also go through, which I didn't know. <laughs> so I mixed up the epoxy and I poured it in there and I thought, wow, that hole is really deep. Wood sure is mysterious. <laughs> oh my God. 
And then I let it cure overnight. And then I scraped it with a card scraper so it was all nice and flush. And then I slapped a coat of regular old clear Pollux on the back just for a bit of extra protection. And I just felt so happy. I felt like, hooray, it's done. And then I lifted it up. And you'll notice that right there, it stuck itself to the cardboard. <laughs> oh, it's painful to watch this. <laughs> oh my God. Son of a... I don't think you can blame me. I, I, I turned the camera off. I mean, I just wanted to set everything on fire and cry. I was like past the point of yelling and being pissed off upset into the just like small disappointed voice. Like, oh no, kind of like, like when you're past swearing and you're just, you're just saying, oh golly. Cause you, you just, your mind is blown. I don't know if you've ever been there. I gotta tell you, try not to go there. It's not fun. Once I calmed down, I took a razor blade and a card scraper and I very carefully scraped off the epoxy. Because there was already wax on the wood, it seemed like the epoxy didn't actually bond to the wood. However, it did bond to the finish and it made a hole in the finish that looked ugly. So then I hoped that I could redo that one area and blend it. I put on the first coat and it didn't seem to do much of anything. Then the second coat I put on super heavy because I thought maybe I could just like buff it lightly and, and blend it. But the result was it didn't work at all. It just looked terrible. I don't know, maybe there was epoxy in the wood after all. I'm not sure. Or maybe this wax just doesn't blend like that. Or maybe I just don't know how to do it. So then for the second time, I removed all the white wax. This is a friend of mine helping me use a card scraper to remove it. I will say this, I learned a lot about card scrapers on this project. I learned how to sharpen them and how to use them to remove wax <laughs> and also finish wood. It's a great tool. Here it is prepped for the third time, ready once again for finish. It's as good as I know how to make it. And it came out pretty good. So then I brought it home and installed it. I used these large picture hanging rails, which are rated for 400 pounds, according to the box. The headboard also has legs. They're basically just two by fours. I use these Festool knockdown connectors to attach them to the headboard. Really like these things, they're awesome. I would not make a headboard that only use these connectors and legs because it's a bit wobbly, but I always knew that I was gonna have the rail and the legs. The legs support the weight, and then the rail is really just to keep it from falling off the wall and crushing us in our sleep. Then I put it up, and then it was done. And there you go. I only had to finish it three times, but um, yeah, it came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I like looking at it and my wife likes it too, which is kind of the most important thing. And I learned a tremendous amount on this project. And I hope I never have to learn quite as much on a single project ever again. I hope that you learned something too, or at least enjoyed watching it. Thanks for watching. Please click the like and subscribe buttons. There's more to come.